a, he was a very, very popular governor in uh, Congo, uh, is running for president. But the problem is President Kabila doesn't want to leave. Uh, it doesn't want to hold elections. And so Governor Katumbi is um, exiled right now. But thank you for coming by. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I invite you to send in questions for uh, Governor Katumbi about Congo, about uh, U.S. policy toward uh, Congo or, or the region, uh, about corruption, which is a huge issue in, in Congo. But um, let me start, uh, you know, with the situation in Congo. I, President Kabila keeps hanging on long after he should have left office. There, these elections just don't materialize, and I guess I'm afraid that we're going to see more violence in a country that has already seen way too much, and that there are going to be protests on the street by your supporters, and that they are going to be mown down with, with gunfire. Yes, uh, uh, what's happening is uh, in Congo, Congo, there is a big total crisis with President Kabila, because uh, Today, everything is organized by President Kabila not to have election. That's why we decided, the people of Congo, the, the, the churches, everyone, we decide Kabila must leave the office and leave somebody to organize the transition because you can't agree you, he's not keeping a word because I've seen an apple in your office is red. For President Kabila, this apple is green. So it's thinking not for the, the better Congo, it's thinking, I think, uh, for a, 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 a bad Congo way he can remain and root the country. Um, and, I mean, isn't there indeed the, you know, a danger of, of a lot of violence? Before, when there were protesters against Kabila, he, he massacred them. And are we headed for more of that? Massacre for him is really nothing. What's happening in the Kasai is organized by the government, by President Kabila which is, is in Puerto today is him, is creating instability. Also with the neighbors, with the nine countries, which is the neighbors of Congo. That's why we don't need a president like him. He must go, he should respect the constitution. And I know he's going to come to the UN and make a speech. He's going to come and lie. From the beginning, he says he's going to respect the constitution, which he never con uh, respect. He say, you should give him one year. We gave one, one year uh, for, to President Kabila. This time is the end. No negotiation. Kabila must go. And Kabila can stay in the country to continue to see what we are going to bring for this better Congo we need uh, uh, for tomorrow. President Kabila, if you are watching, and if you know when you do come by in September, then I do invite you to come here. You, I'll give you equal time. Um, I just do want my visa to visit uh, DRC. Okay, President Kabila. Um, and your own situation is you now. If you were to return, you would be presumably at risk of being imprisoned or or shot. You see, President Kabila is scared about me because all the reports, which, which all the fake charges is trying on me, all those charges are bogus, because uh, even the bishops, the Senko, even the U.S. Amb ambassador in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Congo say all those uh, charges were fake. So for President Kabila is to see me dead or in prison, and he can't do this because I'm going back, I need to save my country. There's been a lot of concern here in this country that our State Department, um, well, President Trump wants to cut the budget for the State Department, uh, people haven't been appointed to senior roles in the State Department, the diplomacy uh, essentially is much less invested in now than it has been in the past. So I'm, I'm curious in the case of Congo, is, is the U.S. State Department is it pulling its weight? Uh, are we pushing for free elections? Are we pushing for President Kabila to step down? What is the situation right now with U.S. diplomacy? The U.S. diplomacy so far is, uh, is uh, so good because they have pushed a lot uh, to make uh, things happen in our country because if there was no democracy, President, President Trump didn't supposed to stand in America. So today there is uh, somebody, a government, of terror with somebody terrorizing everyone we, which want to continue killing the people. So 
I'm asking to the uh, Amer American government and all the partners and to President Trump, Congo is 8 million people which somebody wants to, to continue making the terror on the people, killing the people every day. So, so far America has supported a lot the people of Congo. America is not supporting individuals. America is supporting the country. They want to see a better Congo. How much money is going to the UN uh, uh, for, 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 for Congo since uh, UN uh, is, is there in the Congo? The biggest, uh, the, the largest uh, troops in, uh, uh, in, 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 in entire the world is the uh, U, UN uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Congo. So we need uh, more support because in December, Kabila must go. Uh, it's not going to organize the election. We are going to put somebody in power. The people of Congo are going to put somebody in power. In power, what we need is to stop this killing and fighting and stealing of the of, of all the wealth of the Congo. You know, Governor Kutumbi, I'm sure some people are watching, some Americans, maybe some Europeans, and they're thinking, well, it's too bad if Congo does not have democracy, if there are massacres in Congo, but we have problems at home, uh, we have to worry about Hurricane Harvey, we have to worry about this, worry about that. And it's too bad, but this is not our responsibility, not our problem. So what is the answer to those people about why we should care about what happens in Congo? Why does Congo matter for the world? Congo matter for the world because it's one of the biggest country. And if uh, there is stability, if there is election in Congo, a lot of investors are going to come. And the illegal immigrants are not going to continue uh, uh, coming in, in America or in, uh, in Europe. I think what is important, a, a, a stable Congo is, a better, is the, the, the best thing for Africa, for a better future of Africa. With no stability in Congo, there is no future for Africa. Yeah, and I, you know, I would just add to that that um, I think one of the things we've learned is that chaos and violence are uh, contagious, and we saw that in uh, Rwanda and Burundi, for example, in the 1990s, that uh, chaos and violence there indeed then infected uh, Congo as well, um, and you know also um, diseases uh, we saw with West Africa that. Uh, uh, health threats in one country now become global health threats. So it does seem to me that we have values at stake in Congo, but we also have interests. Um, Zoe is operating the camera. Uh, Zoe, some questions for Governor Katumbi. Yes, Shelley Van B writes, I worry for those who live in the eastern Congo. There's so much violence and poverty affecting those who are trying to survive there. How does the president address the huge diversity of this country? You see, if those things continue today, it's because of one man. I was a governor of Katanga. All these things we can finish in three months' time to finish the whole, to bring uh, peace. The first things I'm going to do if I've been elected as president is to bring first the peace in the, in the, in the country. And what is important, uh, uh, we need to have peace. People have, have suffered a lot. Since President Kabila is there, is over three million people which have been killed in the east of the Congo. And we can't continue with somebody is like a 747 with no pilot is going to kill everyone. So today in the Congo there is no pilot. The hope is for Kabila to go for at least to bring peace in the Congo. Um, and how confident are you that you will be the pilot of that 747 a year from now or 18 months from now? Yes, I'm going to stand and, you know, in democracy there is a lot of surprise. If I win the election, I think I'm going to be a good captain like I was in the Katanga province, which I bring a province which was dying from nowhere and it became the best province. And I brought a lot of investors, over $30 billion was invested, so I'm going to try and call all the investors to bring back on the international community, not to run the country like President Kabila is running, like his only boutique of, 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 with his family. Because if you can see, 
all the reports you are reading in the newspaper is sad and is a shame for a Congo which I like to, to make a better Congo for everyone to come and see the change and that's why I want President Kabila to stay and to see when I'm going to be the, the captain on that, on that country to see the, the, the change. One of the huge issues for Congo and indeed for, uh, for many other countries in, in, in the region, across Africa and much of the world, is corruption. And I mean, frankly, Western companies uh, that are active in the region often are part of the problem uh, and feed that uh, corruption. Uh, one thinks of oil and gas in your neighbor to the south, Angola. Um, what? What responsibility does the West have, if any, to address this kind of corruption? And what can we do to try to limit it so that uh, the wealth of these countries benefits the people and not the president? The problem is impunity, you understand, because there is a lot of impunity. If uh, the time I became governor, there was uh, I find the budget, just one example I'm giving you, I'm giving to the, to the people, 150 million dollar contribution per annum, which I did in one year over two billion dollars because I was fighting corruption. Today there is inflation in Congo and stability. Just look, since when I left as governor, when I resigned as governor, all this instability started because I was fighting corruption, which the Western can help us is because of impunity. If the impunity continue, Congo is not going to go anywhere. Um, and I mean, much of Africa is indeed thriving economically, uh, politically. Um, Kenya, uh, just the, the Supreme Court just overturned the election, which was kind of a really a remarkable assertment of the power of institutions over the power of individuals. And yet, th this region of Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, uh, Angola is kind of the, maybe the messiest region in, on the continent. Um, why is that? I think uh, Africa is uh, changing. Africa is changing what happened uh, in, uh, in uh, Kenya. Uh, in the Constitution Court, nobody believed that the people can do it. That's why I need also, when I've been, I'm going to be elected as president, to bring that change, not change just uh, on the speech, Ch change in the countries and to bring a better life because you see, for Congolese to be respected, to bring uh, peace with the neighbors for everyone, we need to have a strong leadership. Today in Congo, there is no leadership. It's like uh, people are, are gambling today. President Kabila is gambling in the country, so the country doesn't have uh, any way of taking the country. So I think what is important, first for me, is my country. Before I, I look about my neighbors, I want to do the best things for Congo, at least to bring peace with the neighbors and uh, to trade with the neighbors, to trade with everyone, with international community, with in transparency. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming by and for joining the conversation. And um, I also do want to say to President Kabila that one reason I wanted to have this conversation is that, you know, these days, so much of the American conversation is just focused on politics and President Trump that I think it's easy for us to ignore things happening a long way away. And I think this is going to be a really dangerous time in Congo in the coming months. And I want you to be aware, President Kabila, that indeed the world is watching. Uh, thanks very much. Pour la visibilité et la promotion de vos produits et marques, contactez www.congofrance.com. Meilleur site de la diaspora avec plus de 80 000 visites par jour avec une diversité de émissions politiques, musicales, culturelles, sportives et des scoops à temps réel sur le plateau ou en mode duplex.
France.com. Pour la publicité, visibilité, la promotion et la produit, entreprise, la appartement, la vie, vous contactez www.congofrance.com. Meilleur site à diaspora, na plus de 80 000 personnes qui ont été dans site, na biso na mon colo moko et ba émission y a dengue na dengue. Ba émission politique, musicale, culturelle, na ba émission moko y a découverte. Et ba duplex na temps réel. Awa actualité ne actualité. Et Kinjasa Mikili, d'accord. Amofrance.com. Comme en France, on